And my, are, how, are my boots like in frame? Yo, oh, yeah, your out? body is all, you're like up to your nuts that are in frame. <laughs> Just how we like it. <laughs> Ready? Oh, that is a tight pant there. <laughs> hey, what's up guys? My name is Keenan, and today is another breakdown of a set that we're on. And we're gonna show you everything that we did. And it's all for mini slogging. This little wooden box right here. So some of you guys may have played some other hammer and nail games. Well, Mini Schlagen, Mini Schlagen is based out of Mini Soda. It is a portable nail and hammer game. This, my friends, is Mini Schlagen, a portable hammer and nail game that's sure to be an instant hit. The game is simple. Be the first player to sink your nail into the log so that the head is flush with the wood. Now you can't just like hammer it, hold it on top. You have to hold it beside, and you get one swing, and you hit, and you pass it to the left. When they first came to us, they were like, "We really want to do, we want to do a video, we want to do something fun," and so we kind of went, we kind of went with it. We're like, "Okay, so let's build the video around a character." Now it's a log. It's you know, who's our who's a lumberjack? We're like, "Okay, let's do something off of Paul Bunyan." So we're like, okay, it can't be Paul Bunyan though. What if we made a new character called Tall Funman? Did he say Paul Bunyan? It's Tall Funman. And he explained why all the other yard games, which most of the yard games involve throwing. Here's the problem. Every yard game is the same. Throw the beanbag, aim for the hole. Throw the horseshoe. Aim for the pole. Toss the wood ring. Aim for the... Oh, for Pete's sake. What's the deal with all this throwing? And this is a game you can take anywhere, play anytime. It's just a sweet game, something new, something cool. So obviously this wasn't your standard kind of talking head and B-roll style commercial. This one had some kind of weird fun effects and we're gonna talk about how we did some of those. We're gonna break them down. So one of the first kind of major effects that happens in the ad is when Tall Funman is flying in on his ax for the first time. My wife and I actually did a similar sequence where she was a witch flying in on a broomstick and that was very much what this was inspired by. You know, we wanted Tall Funman to do things kind of his own way. He's using an ax for transportation and a lasso to cut down trees. He's a wacky character, and this was just another thing that we wanted to do to get people's attention right away. And as you can probably guess, this is another one of those sequences where we really benefited from using green screen. We had him kind of uh, sitting on a speed rail that was being held up by two combo stands on either side. Probably not the most comfortable thing, uh, but he made it work, he was a trooper. Another thing that I think helped this sequence was by having multiple layers. Um, having our background being the sky, having Joel on the ax in the middle, and then we did have a couple cloud foreground elements kind of passing by just to add some additional layers. It's the Lorax versus Tall Funman this summer at the Civic Center in Bismarck. This is our set, we did giant green screens. Now we played around with a couple different things and we had some at one point, we had this totally covered in some uh, leafy green panels and this side as the green screen. We weren't crazy about the way that looked. So we scrapped all that and we just went full on green screen and the green screen is getting hit with the Novas and then it's also getting hit with some Aperture LS1s. So we had two Falcon Eyes panels up top and our big 12 by over here, we had our half soft frost another layer of diffusion, and a very big 600D Pro as the fill. And then we had our main sun coming from over here. We had a 300D that we would kind of spot and uh, make it feel a lot sunnier. And that, uh, that was over here before it got moved. But you could imagine where it would be, you know, if it was still there. Oh, oh, oh. Get around, we'll die. We'll put that there. Adam, are you okay? I'm good. In the beginning stages of post-production when we were compositing this stuff together, at first I really thought we could just use stock images um, of neighborhoods and trees and things like that, but we quickly realized that it would be much better to actually bring our camera out into a neighborhood and film the tops of houses and trees kind of, you know, waving in the wind. So happy we did that. That just ended up looking so much better. I say you just you just let it travel through the frame naturally. Okay. But then also do the spinning one. Right. Ready? Go ahead. 
Originally, we had a nice little patio set up right here. A couple of chairs, it was looking really, really good. We did the patio with these really sweet interlocking patio paver things. And these were actually super cheap for what they were. They were like three bucks each. So we just built a little patio on top of our turf and these were awesome. Highly recommend those. Right next to that we have our very sweet uh, dumbbell that Tall was uh, curling at one point during the ad as well. And then we have right here, we have, what's fun about this set is some of this is actually real. That tree is fake. These are, are very, very real. You know, that was part of it was like creating a real scene of like, how do we just add a few little things? These are real and they are dying. They are very much dying. They are uh, on the last uh, leg of their journey, but th that's okay. They served their purpose. They served it well. Um, and you can see that we're missing some pavers here. Things look a little different than when we originally filmed them, but you can kind of get an idea of what we were doing. Now the next effect that we'll talk about is the scene where we had our elderly woman get hit in the face with a horseshoe. Now for a little while we actually talked about shooting this practically. Well, I'm glad that we didn't. Um, we thought we could maybe get away with this because we were using a horseshoe that was really made of a, like a hard rubber or plastic, but after trying it on ourselves a few times. Oh, Edward! <laughs> we realized that if we did a handful of takes, I don't think our, our actress would have been very happy with us. So what we decided to do is have her react to nothing, just simply flinch. And then we threw our horseshoe at a green screen and mashed those two clips on top of one another once we did the composite on the horseshoe, added a sound effect. And I think it made for a pretty convincing moment. Or Grandma gets smacked with a horseshoe. Ah, what was that? Play that clip again. Ah, Let's play it again. Ah, All right, one more time. Ah, Just one more time. Ah, oh. Yeah, we did a lot of takes of her. She reacted quite a few times. Some more convincing than others. Ah. <laughs> you sound like a bird. <laughs> we have a lot more of our props over here that I didn't talk about. You know, our grill. We got our logs. We got our extra mini schlagen sets. Uh, we have our uh, our cool whip and that was a really fun scene. We actually used this to pull a schlag right from the middle of a tree. We really benefited from shooting this mostly in close-ups. For that shot where we had that whip wrap around the tree trunk, that was of course just put in reverse. We went ahead and tied that whip around it and then yanked it off and then put it in reverse and boom, you got yourself a perfect lasso effect. And for that next part of the effect where we have that wooden disc that flies out of the trunk, we had three separate pieces of wood, that base layer of the trunk, the wooden disc, and then that top layer of the trunk. And that top layer actually uh, was screwed into a speed rail which then had combo stands on either side. And so we could have two people on either side push it down so it could meet up with that base layer of the trunk once that wooden disc comes out. That took some puppeteering and a couple different takes to get it just right. Whoa! Whoa! Okay, that should help. But yeah, you can see from some of that B-roll that it, it, it took a handful of people to make that effect work. Now there's another effect that we've done a handful of times before that I really enjoy doing is the, uh, the whole concept of using a TV as a backdrop. Um, we've done it once before in the pumpkin gaffer ad. Uh, we made a YouTube video all about that commercial uh, last year. You can go ahead and check it out right here. We used this technique for a handful of the close-ups with the mini schlagen when it was being played. The reason why we had done it this way is because these were pickup shots that were actually done a few weeks after we were done filming. So the set had already been taken down and we wanted to have some little motion here and there and we thought it'd be much easier just to capture it in camera and made it a lot faster. Another sequence that we used with the TV was the stormy thunderstorm night with the lightning bolt and the horseshoe. We just didn't want to wait for the weather to get nasty so we shot it with the TV and really speeded things up. And this brings us to our final effect. It's the chandelier crashing from the ceiling gag that we did. What in the world? We weren't in a real room. We actually shot it right here in our studio. Today we're shooting the 
insert shot of a chandelier coming off of uh, the the ceiling. What a uh, ladder ball! I don't know what the, what it's called. That that darn game over there. Bolongo ball. Oh, Bolongo ball. Adam worked uh, tirelessly on designing this little set here. It looks really good. It's just two flats um, at a, you know, kind of creating an L shape here. And, um, and yeah, some paper backdrops. You nailed it. You nailed it, dude. Thanks. We're using those aperture bulbs in there so that thing's not even powered up. It's, it's all battery ba based. And it's powered by Soylent. Powered by Soylent. We had lots of questions on whose house were you in and whose chandelier did you break to pull off this effect how is how did you do that so there you go it's been revealed now you know so this was a really cool set because we were able to maximize and use as this is the big one of the biggest sets that we've ever built in our studio so we really maxed out the usable area that we could in here so it was a lot of fun to be able to uh, use this much space and i think they are only going to get bigger from here so Thanks for tuning in. My name's Keenan. Check out Mini Slogan in the description below. Maybe get your own. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. This, <laughs> I'm re receiving reports that a large man with an axe is going downtown and swinging to destroy the trees. I don't know what else you want me to say.